All right, so we're back on the uh, snapper mower here. And what you see in front of you is what's left of the carburetor. Uh, I had to buy a new choke. I don't know what you want to call it. Shaft choke. 398186. Because um, when I clean this before I put it away, carburetor cleaner completely pretty much melted the old choke shaft. That's what's left of it anyway. The spring's still good. But, so, this is, be wary of where you spray a carburetor cleaner on plastic. Because, I mean, usually these are steel or cast. And uh, I haven't really had any trouble using my cleaner. But uh, the first time it actually just melted it. So... That's melted. Um, carburetor itself has been soaking in this old uh, peanut butter jar, and it's full of uh, lacquer thinner. So it was it was pretty crusty because I haven't uh, cleaned it. There's the uh, bowl gasket. That's the only part that flexed. Everything else was just brittle. Again, this motor has not ran since I've received it, so I am kind of eager to hear this thing run. I do have quite a few parts on order. I have a new coil coming. Uh, not, the, not that this coil is bad, but if I'm going to sell this, uh, I want a reliable new coil. And I can keep that coil for other snappers that I'm going to look into. So... We got a coil coming, we got a recoil spring coming, we got uh, the breather tube. So, here, breather tube. Breather tube is what comes from the valves here. It screws in right here and it runs over and goes into your air cleaner. That's why your air cleaner has this tube here. And, uh, I usually look up my parts on uh, Jack's small engines, and it said it was no longer available. So, you know when anything says no longer available, what's the next best thing? You go to eBay. And uh, eBay had it, so that's coming on order. Um, I'm going to run and get a new kit for the carburetor. And we'll put that together here in a few. And... Uh, Mower deck wise, mower deck wise, we're all in pieces here. I took it apart yesterday, and uh, I painted this section of it to see how my uh, spray paint will do. Is the Dupla Color acrylic enamel cherry red? For those who are curious. And uh, in one of my previous videos, I picked a bunch of these up for a buck. So I just wanted to see what the uh, red looks like. And it actually looks pretty nice. That is with a coat of the Rust-Oleum self-etching primer. Uh, it'll probably get sanded off, and then I'll redo it. But I usually get the... Uh, I forgot what primer I used on my other 87, but... I'll figure it out here. The store I usually buy my spray paint from is reorganizing all their spray paint, so there isn't very much uh, selection at the moment. But anyway, the deck is in fairly good shape. A um, little bit of rusting, but nothing that's uh, that nothing that a wire wire brush won't knock down. So on the inside, I usually paint paint on the uh, paint. I don't spray paint it. I just get a you know cheapy brush and just paint it on there. And then for the outside, you know, the, the part you look at, you do the uh, spray paint. Um, sticker wise, um, I can get this one from Click It and Stick It, although you have to pay $30 for the set. And I might use uh, the other one 
the one that goes on the front here that says extra tough. So that might look good. But then you have to buy that decal separate. And uh, the nameplate tag here, I don't know if I really want to keep it original or not because it is kind of wearing out. But it does show the age of it. So I might keep that the same. I might just tape over it when I paint it. But this one and that one will go away. And uh, we'll just paint over it. There is a caution label right here. But there's so much rust on it that you can't really see it. And it's just about the side discharge chute. So everything else is in my Folgers can here. Um, these can be tricky to remove. Uh, there is just the nut or the bolt in the nut there. But up in between, between the the pulley and this bracket, there's this, uh, I don't know, it's a bushing, but it, on the 87 it had these two flat spots on it, so I had to like mill this out out of a chunk of scrap at work so it could fit in there, and so I could get a, a good grip on it, but uh, this one came right off, so we'll uh, take this apart, de-rust it, and uh, stick it in the lathe and just uh, with some sandpaper just go over it. I am kind of curious to use some of that uh, like metal rust remover. Uh, Hand Tool Rescue uses it and uh, or metal, what is it, metal bath remover, whatever it is. But I do like uh, electrolysis. That's an easy way to do it too. Um, if you have a lot of time the handles, they're still okay. The, um, well, everything else on it was good. All the cables are in pretty good shape. So, I mean, these are easy. You can easily spend a lot of money on these. Um, just in decals. I'm probably looking at, like, maybe 40 or 50 bucks. And then in the wheels themselves, you're looking at, like, Maybe close to a hundred bucks for a new set of wheels for this thing. And, uh, labor-wise, it's pretty much a labor of love. So, that is where the snapper is currently. We do have a new, uh, a new machine to add to our hoard, and that's this little, uh, pressure washer I picked up from a garage sale. So, that thing is coming very handy in washing this off and it saves a lot of labor so let me go get the uh, carb kit and we'll uh, get going on the carburetor here all right so we're back from the store and we got our carb kit here <clears throat> it was uh, 13 bucks for it and it says made in China on it and this old part I bought yesterday made in USA so it's been a while since Briggs was made in USA and so I'll take our carburetor out of our lacquer center here and remember we we'll wear gloves because this stuff is not so friendly on skin The bowl is in pretty nice shape, although it looks like gas hasn't been in it for some time. It does have a little bit of denting around the, the ring here, but it's not rusted out or crusty. I mean, overall, this thing wasn't too terrible, and I must have not used it all that much before it froze up or what have you. The only telltale sign is that the exhaust valve is a little blue, but it's not too big of a deal. All right. <clears throat> so the bottom of our chunky here has a little bit of particles in it. But the body of it is in pretty decent shape 
So let me uh, carb clean this and uh, we'll get to assembling it back to where it was. All right, so it's all sprayed out, and uh, now we'll get to putting it back together again. And I'm going to be working around you guys, so uh, pardon me if it's not in the frame entirely. So we're going to start. Actually, let's try to make it all in the frame. Look at that. <clears throat> all right, we're going to start with our bottom here. And we got multiple new things. So first we're going to start off with our new seal. That little tiny guy. And where on earth is my Tecumseh tool? Where'd it go? Come on. Let me find it. All right, well, it was actually where it's supposed to be. So this is uh, Tecumseh 670377. This is a seat removal tool and to put a new seat in place. And uh, this thing is very handy. <clears throat> So with these, you want to make sure that the ring, the ring of the seal is down. And you just want to shove her in there and press firmly. Make sure it's seated right. It's down in there, so this makes life a heck of a lot easier and uh, well worth the money, in my opinion, if you're dealing with valves or with uh, seats. And just the hook itself is really handy to get it out of there, also. <coughs> Excuse me, and the smoke's getting pretty bad out there. So, with our new seat, we will move on to our float and our needle. So the float on this is actually not bad, um, just a little yellowed, but that's not going to hurt nothing. Oh my gosh. <coughs> uh, there we go. Alright. Our new needle, like so. And get our new uh, pin here. New pin. Come on, don't be like that. There it goes. Jeez, that's pretty high. Where's my old... That floats pretty high up. So that's not going to work. Let's find out what is wrong here. Ah, uh, the seat was not down all the way. There. Now, with the seat down all the way, there it goes. That's a lot better. There, now it's almost level. That's what you want. Right, with our new bowl gasket here, Usually just put it over the top here and then take our bowl. This one, it doesn't matter where the bowl sits. Tecumseh's have those dent on the bottom and those go over right here. But Briggs does not have that. So we'll put that right there. And I have not cleaned that jet either, so let me clean that real quick. This one's really crusty. 
See how crusty it is. Nothing a little carb cleaner won't fix. Oops. And you also want to make sure that the uh, passageways on it are clear because this thing ain't going to start if the ports aren't clear on it. As you can see, hopefully you can see anyway, that top port is completely clogged. <clears throat> so, I'm going to have to get out the... Uh, Piece of wire here. And we'll clean that out real quick. See, the problem with organizing is that you have to remember where the heck you put it. And obviously, I'm not used to it at the moment. Thought it was like right there, but it's not there. Hmm. Ooh, there we go. There you go. Finish nail work. Get down in there. Yeah, you can see all the crusty goo coming out of there. Might have to have it soaking lacquer thinner a little bit. Hmm. Well then. If I can figure out where the heck my tip cleaners went. I thought they were like right here. Hmm. Oh well. Anyway, we'll uh, let this soak a little bit. stuff inside of there. Wonder what what was in there. It's like dry sludgy powder kinda I guess. There we go, cleaned it out. So now that port is clear, and you want to make sure you can see through the port. It's not focusing. All right, so we got that all cleaned off. The wire wheel there. Alright, 
now that our dead is clean, we can take our little gasket here and fit it over like so. Now it goes on the bottom. Make sure you do it by hand until you can get it somewhat tight. And then you just manually tighten it up until it's snug. There you go. So now we got to put in our uh, choke valve and our governor valve here. So choke valve has a little foam pad in the spring and I'm pretty sure I have that backwards spring and then the foam pad here we go so put that down that. Now we better clean that up a little bit. Clean it up. and shiny. There's our choke. Nice. Much better than it was. Hopefully that's right. Or is it the other way? <laughs> is it the other way? Yeah. No. No, it should be like that. Well, if not, back to the drawing board. <laughs> This is off of another dead mower. I mean, I could have guessed you that shaft. But, anyway. Good reference. We're on the right path here. Alright, for our other valve, we're going to use this guy. But we're going to clean him up a little bit. And... I'm going to use that. All right, I'm going to clean this up a little bit, and uh, we'll get back to you. All right, so I got it all cleaned up, and put our little felt on there, and it just slides in. You want to make sure it's nice and movable. This one had a slight bend, but I was able to just slightly bend it back. Now the tricky part is getting this to go back in there. And you always want to make sure you're putting it in the right way. So this one still has the mark on the back of it. So you just kind of lay that in there. Or maybe it went the other way. You can usually tell pretty quick if it doesn't go in the right way. go and get our teeny little flathead screw there just 
Sorry I'm not in frame, I just don't want to lose this little screw. Alright. Here, so install like so. Tighten it down. So there we go. Alright, now we have our, uh, oh that's for the, okay, so here's our uh, adjustment screw, and our kit does come with uh, some new ones here, and uh, these are plastic, and this one's steel, so you can reuse them, if you had to you could reuse that one. Um, you just want to make sure the tip is nice and pointed and it's not squished in, which this one is still nice. And just brush it a little with our old toothbrush to knock the grime off. Like so. Alright. I'm going to get our spring. Nice and pretty. So we're going to have to adjust it when we get it running. But I'm just... Actually, this little O-ring goes right there and helps seal your port, which this one didn't have. So it should be like, like that. And you want to make sure you don't cross the threads on this. Because that would not be good. So we're just going to back it in. Two turns out is usually a pretty good start point. One half, one, one and a half, two. About like so. And then our other screw over here is for the uh, idle adjustment. It's got a little bit of rust on it. So we'll just kind of knock that down. Like before, a lot of rust removal. If you don't like rust removal, then uh, I guess you shouldn't be doing this. Because like 90% of it is rust removal. And the rest is like paint. Maybe a few mechanical things. But these old mowers are worth it. So. Also, it's kind of relaxing. I usually have music going, but I don't want to get into a copyright violation. And I don't talk to myself, I can just talk to you guys. So, got a little bit of rust on it, but anyway, this is your idle adjustment. So, this one goes up here. So, I don't really know where the idle was, but I just kind of eyeball it a little bit. So you figure it has to be a little bit open for it to idle. Maybe like so. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is a fully rebuilt Walboro carburetor for a Briggs. And uh, I would buy an aftermarket, but I'd really rather keep it as original as I can. And this carburetor wasn't in too bad a shape. So for 13 bucks, well, 13 and, uh, what, like four for the new choke shaft, like actual parts for the carburetor, uh, you can't go wrong with these old guys. So that'll conclude this video, guys. And uh, in the next one, we'll uh, keep going at the deck, and we'll probably 
keep assembling the motor and get that ready for paint. And uh, until then, thanks for watching and subscribing, and we'll see you guys in the next video.